overall, I just thought it was a better tasting pour. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's as simple as that. Like, you come here for high-level tasting notes, right? Welcome to the channel, bringing a real-world perspective to the real-world whiskey consumer. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And we are back with another Double Blind Head-to-Head, -head where we randomly select a pair from our Double Blind Head-to-Head -head sample pool. We taste them totally at random. We give you ratings before we find out the price and see if that changes our ratings. And then we find out what we're drinking. We do it this way so that you get the most honest opinions possible. We're not influenced by any labels or hype or bias or even price tags in the beginning. You just get to see what these glasses are for what they are. Yep. And you get to see how they compare, which one wins. These are a ton of fun. If you like this, go ahead and subscribe because we do these videos every Thursday. Cannot wait to get this on the nose. Let's go ahead and smell glass one. So this one smells kind of like alcohol burny, but then underneath there, I'm getting a hint of some kind of fruit. I think it's a sweet fruit and also air, like it's outside. I'm getting like a red berry cobbler on this. It's, oh, I wish I was getting that. It's sweet, it's sugary, it's got some depth to it, like that pie crusty depth mm. to it. It smells really good to me. Yeah. Let's get it on the palate. Whoa, this tastes like a strawberry shortcake doll. I've said this before about something. You have, yeah. What it was it? It definitely does. Um, you said it about several things. You've said it about Cooper's Craft 100. You've said it about Blade and Bow. You've said it about E.H. Taylor Small Batch. I wonder what the through line is in all of those that makes me taste that flavor. I mean, just I think a strawberry fruit forwardness because but that's exactly what this is. It's strawberry fruit forward, but it's not super sickeningly sweet. Yeah if that makes sense at all. Yeah, I mean, this could be one of those for all we know. We have no clue what we're drinking. You're probably laughing right now if it is one of those. I know, Because be you already know what we're drinking. <laughs> we have no clue. But yeah, this is very much like a strawberry fruity sweetness. I was getting that berry cobbler yeah. on the nose. Yeah. All that darkness is gone on the palate. This is very like artificial, bright fruit sweetness. Let's get another sip. Okay. So I have to say when I was going back in for my second sip on the nose, as I was, you know, going up for the, mm -hmm. the drink, I was smelling cornbread. Yeah. <laughs> it smelled like cornbread. And then I tasted strawberry shortcake, like not the the meal, but like the meal, the, the dessert, the dessert, but the, the doll, the, the, the yeah. little action figurine that I had in the eighties yeah. from the cartoon, strawberry shortcake. Yeah, yeah. She used to chew on those a lot. So. No, it just smelled it like her hat smelled. Yeah. That's what it smells like. Plastic and strawberries. Yeah. I think it smelled really good on the nose. I was really happy with the nose, but the palate's leaving me a little wanting personally speaking. I think the, the depth that I got on the nose just isn't coming through on the palate. It's yeah. just all bright, all sweet, and all it, fruity. It does taste like an artificial fruitiness which yeah. it's like a candy it's sweetness not bad but it may not be my favorite yeah. you know those little um like they're like those cellophane wrappers i don't even know if cellophane is the right word yeah, but they're kind of so. plasticky yeah. and it's the strawberry it like the yeah. wrapper looks like a strawberry uh -huh. you open it up oh, it's a hard candy yeah. that's what that is hold on to me let me confirm okay it's just thin it's a little thinner than i would prefer it's a little brighter than i would prefer there's no depth to anchor the sweetness what you said is true. It, it's like a sugary hard candy. Yep. So if you like that in a glass of bourbon, which it seems like bourbon to me, been wrong before, but definitely seems like bourbon, that's what you're gonna get out of glass one. Let's go ahead and get into glass two and see how it compares on the nose. Oh, mama mia, I like this. This smells like the straight up outside doors. <laughs> the air outside. The air, the clouds. This to me smells like Glass one, except older and more mature. Okay. Mature. 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 How do you say it? Is it tour, ma mature, or mature? Manure. <laughs> it doesn't smell like that. It smells quite pleasant. Yeah, there's like a, a vanilla creaminess that's anchoring all the sweetness in glass two that just glass yeah. one cannot compete with, at least on the nose. Glass one on the nose was good. Let us down on the palate. Let's get into glass two on the palate and see. This tastes like a Whole Foods market <laughs> and also pepper, um, white pepper. Interesting. I'm getting, I'm not getting any prickliness like that, that you would get from pepper. I'm getting white pepper. I'm getting that, 
a cherry sweetness on the palate. I'm getting the vanilla creaminess to kind of anchor that down a little bit. I'm getting some oak, but I'm not getting the depth that I want based on what the nose is giving me. These are now two glasses that are letting me down a little bit on the palate. It's good on the palate. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not mad at it by any means, but it's just not, it doesn't have the depth I want. This one tastes healthy. Is there a health food whiskey out in the world? Like probiotics and stuff? We should make that. Can you make whiskey with like probiotics and prebiotics in it? And, mar so. and then market it as like healthy? There's no way that wouldn't affect the flavor. I mean, Man. it could be good. Second sip on that one is getting more cherry sweet, like cherry syrup. Almost leaning into like a cocktail cherry syrup. I am not getting that at all. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to spend some time with these. And by the way, good point of note there. We're drinking the exact same things. Our palates are different. So mm -hmm. we're getting different things from each glass. So yeah. you may get something completely different on both of these if you drink them yourself. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some time, compare them without talking to a camera so we can really focus on what we're doing. And then we'll come back. We'll have some ratings. We'll see if the price changes our ratings and then we'll find out what we've been drinking. So we'll be right back. All right. After spending some time with both of these, what do you think? How do they compare? What are your ratings? All right. Fill us in. So I don't have a ton to say, so I'm just going to get right into my ratings. Cut to the chase. So for glass one, it gets just okay. It's okay. fine. Yeah. I could take it or leave it. Yep. Yep. Glass two. Glass two gets a thumbs up. I liked it a lot. Overall, I just thought it was a better tasting pour. Yeah. I mean, sometimes <laughs> it's as simple as that. Like you come here for high level tasting notes, right? I mean, to me, these were both, you know, good, but not great on either account. Although glass two was definitely my preference mm -hmm. and it wasn't close. It was very easy to pick glass two after starting with glass two, going back to glass one, glass one seemed kind of thin, very artificial, mm -hmm. kind of young. Yeah. Watch it not be. But nonetheless, that's what it tasted like to me today. And palettes differ day to day. Yep. But for me, glass one was just that thin artificialness. Glass you two. You give it a, as a rating. Oh, I'm the same place as you. Just okay on glass one, thumbs up on glass two. Yeah, we agree. We do agree, which is not common. It, <laughs> you, you know what? It happens more and more these days. I feel like we're, we're acclimating to each other's palettes. I think we're coming into the middle. Okay. I was going to, you know what, never mind. I'm going to leave what I was going to say on the cutting room floor. We don't need to bring that into uh -oh. light. No, I'm. Just, don't worry about it. Nonetheless, <laughs> we're a family channel for 21 plus whiskey drinkers. Gotcha. Nonetheless, class two has much more depth, richness, seemingly age. It has a rounder profile. It's just really good. This yeah. is like artificial strawberry brightness and not a whole lot else. Yeah. Whereas glass two is leaning a little bit more into cherry and the cherry is just like this nice cherry pie, cherry dessert type yeah. of vibe to it. I'm getting like a whole foods market, which is amazing to me. So yeah, I really like glass two. I can't wait to find out what they are. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see why they're in our pool against yeah. each other. And we'll go ahead and get into that now. And we're going to find out the price first and see if that changes our ratings. So glass number one in our head to head pool is number 75. And glass number two is number 76. So the price on glass one, number 75, is... $45. Really? Yeah. That doesn't taste like $45 to me. What's glass number two? $30. Glass, get glass two. I, where are you at on your ratings? How do they change? They don't change. Okay. I, glass, glass one is still just okay. Glass two is still good. Yeah. I will say I'm staying in the same place because glass one at $45, I'm not going to move to a thumbs down. I'm not going to move to a hard pass because yeah. it's not bad. There's nothing no, off putting in it. No, it's not bad, it, especially if you like a fruit, like an artificially fruit flavor, which I think some people do. Yeah. Whereas glass two, though, it brings so much more to the equation. Mm -hmm. To me, like I would have thought these prices would be flip flop. Mm -hmm. So I yep. think the value, I think the taste is there on glass two. Mm -hmm. Personally speaking, I would finish a glass of glass one if someone hand, I'm not going to buy a bottle of this. I don't, that's a just okay for me. Right. I don't have to have a bottle of it. If somebody handed me a glass of it, I would finish the glass. I would not ask for another one. Whereas yeah. glass two, thumbs up. I would yeah. happily ask for another glass. Would be happy owning a bottle of glass yeah. too. So I was going to say before we found the price that glass one would be like a good thing to mix with like a soft drink, like a mixer. Yeah. How did I drink it? I 
different people have different tastes, of course, but I like a little uh, soda with lime lemon flavor, uh, Seven Up, Sprite, something like that. But uh, I take and put out a, a shot, of one ounce over ice cubes and a little bit of Seven Up or Sprite. That's the way I like it. A lot of people are drinking it with Coca-Cola, which uh, don't appeal to me, but it's a, a lot of people drink it that way. But at $45, $45 I feel like maybe glass, glass one is not as good, and at $30, glass two is a better mixer, even though it's stronger flavor yeah, as just, far as whiskey is concerned. I just buy glass two all day long. Glass one's fine, maybe, you know, whatever. Okay, what are we drinking? What's glass number one? Elmer T. Lee? <laughs> I know enough to know that that's like a hard to find thing, right? Incredibly hard to find. Seriously? Wow. Yeah, that bottle is just, oh boy, okay. A huge disappointment. Let me just put it on the table. Glass number two, what is it? So you just bought this. I did? You did just buy this. Like, What is it? Tell me. Tell them. Well, they just, know. You Tell just, me. You just bought a bottle of it today, probably to replenish the one that's in here. Eagle Rare? Russell's Reserve 10 Year. Oh. These are both 90 proof, by the way. They drink, mm, I'd say like 95 to 100 proof. They, they, they didn't seem low proof. So did you buy the Russell's Reserve 10 year to replace the one, the one that was in here? Yeah, yeah, this was the Russell's Reserve 10 year that went into this head to head from a little bit back. It's gone. It's gone. And, so and you... we just bought a replacement one and I'm glad. It's, yeah. a, it's a good solid yeah. 90 proof pour again. Did you pay $30 for it? Uh, this one was from my local store, which is a little mom and pop shop. Mm -hmm. And so they will mark things that they know that people like up a few bucks. So I actually paid $40 for this bottle or the bottle that I bought literally this morning. Yeah, today. However, for this bottle, we got it on sale for the bottle that's in this head to head. We got it on sale for $26. But retail is about 30 bucks. 30, 35 bucks. Okay. You know, in that ballpark range is what you're going to pay for Russell's wow. 10 year. I mean, look, wow. guys, look, guys, Elmer T. Lee. Do not, please don't go out and pay $300 for it unless you just want to have the bottle on your shelf and you know you're paying for the rarity of it. Mm. It is you're not. You're paying for the rarity, not for the flavor of what's in the bottle. Right. In our market, this is a $45 bottle. It's technically $43 MSRP, but okay. if I put something odd like that in the pool, yeah. when you say $43, I'll immediately know what it is. Right. So I round it up so I wouldn't know. $45, it's a fine, fair price for it. I've main, long maintained that $50 is my breaking point on Elmer T. Lee. I'll okay. pay $49.99 for it. I'm not going to pay any more than that for it. People in our market pay $300 wow. for these bottles, that... if not more. So This is not a $300 whiskey. Well, my, this, ain't even a, this ain't even an $80 whiskey. My, like, the more you know segment of this is if you know you like it and it's worth paying $300, then do it. And you can do it. But if you're just paying $300 because someone told you it's awesome or it's rare, you've never tried it, like, I wouldn't say it's worth it yeah. for, that, for that reason. Find a bar, for heaven's sakes, find a bar and try a pour for mm -hmm. 20 bucks before mm -hmm. you go out and spend $300 on a bottle. And for sure. buy a pour of something else that's available and compare and have the barkeeper mix them up for you. Yeah. Have the barkeeper blind you. I actually have done that in bars before, in like high-end bars in Nashville. You did it at Bastion. I did you? it at Bastion in Nashville. I was like, hey, I need you to blind me on these two pours. Like mix them up and remember which is which and let me yeah, do a head-to-head -head here. I remember that. So you can do that. Have some fun. They're going to get a kick out of it. They, It's something different for them. I'm telling you guys, Elmer T. Lee is fine. It's fine. This bottle is our bottle that's almost gone now. Mm -hmm. I've had a $15 bottle of Evan Williams 1783 beaded in blind head to heads for myself. Wow. For a ton of other people. I've had other Elmer T. Lee bottles because it is a single barrel. Mm. And, you know, it's it's just all right. I've never had, maybe there are ones out there that just are going to blow me away. I've never had any of them. Fair. So just know what you're getting into before you drop a ton of coin on Elmer T. Lee. Russell's Reserve 10-year, I mean, it's probably the best value for the highest age statement that you can get on the market. Yeah, 10 years for 40 bucks, 35? 30, 30, 35 bucks yeah. in most markets is a, is a very fair price. 
Eagle Rare is also a very comparable pour to Russell's 10. Get that if you can get it, if it's in your market, but it's probably not unless you live in a very few specific markets. Or if you're in the UK, I think it's pretty readily available in the UK. Yeah, Leanne says that she can get her hands on it. So, mm -hmm. but as far as I'm concerned, where we're at, where most of you guys are at, Russell's 10 is a really solid buy. This is a very enlightening head to head yeah. for us. I mean, I knew this bottle Elmer T. Lee was fine, but not great. Yeah. And I'm happy to see it bear out here. I'm happy to see Russell's win. I, we don't try to think about what's in the glass. So I wasn't even thinking of anything when we were tasting, but just what your the mind glass, was just a blank void. It was, I was letting the glasses just fill it up and oh. glass two filled me up better than glass one. So Alrighty then. there you go. If you like what we do over here, go ahead and subscribe because we bring you this content every week. Like the video if you like it. And if this has inspired you to do some blind tastings of your own, check the video description below for the sample jars that we use, not affiliated. We get no kickback. We just want to encourage you guys to do your own blind tastings. You can get 12 jars for like 15 bucks. So put some of your favorite stuff in there, put some stuff in there that you think is just kind of middle of the road, draw samples at random and taste it without the hype and bias of the bottle. Yeah influencing it's, you if nothing else it's fun to do the reveals are fun mm -hmm. if you haven't picked up on that around here yeah by the way while you're down there click the bell that will let you know when we're doing our once a month live streams those are a ton of fun we'd love for you to join us for a pour absolutely that's it for today be good to each other and until next time cheers, cheers. man what in the world people pay 300 dollars for elmer Teeley. why because it because it's rare and it's hyped and they want to flex on in on the internet Possibly. Not everyone, but possibly, yeah. That is not $300 whiskey. That's not $100 whiskey. I don't think it is. But it's, then again, I also paid like $100 for a button-down shirt. So who am I to judge? I honestly don't even think this is worth the MSRP. I think it's $45 mm -hmm. is pushing it. Man, Russell's tin just trounces all over that. So aren't you proud of me that I remembered that you bought that today? Mm -hmm. Because I was listening to you. You were. You really do listen. You I'm really do care. I'm such a good wife. <laughs>